I know I've talked about Stack and Heap extensively, and now I'm getting in more into the bits and bytes and memory, and I want to just do one last example with this, the Heap, and then I'm going to show you the Stack and how the Stack actually does things. Let's make a, oops, let's make a class called Counting Class. I'm going to make a static short counter, and I'll explicitly set that to zero, even though that's not necessary. I could leave that off. And in .NET, C Sharp, it will zero it out for me. I'm using short because I want to align on a two-byte boundary. You saw, you saw the packing and alignment video prior to this one. So short ID and char C. Why did I need two bytes? Well, because I'm using this char here, and I want it to line up quite nicely with this short. So one instance of this class, as far as the data members are concerned, will need four bytes and then the static will be off and another part of memory that I'm going to talk about in a different video. Alright, let's first of all tell the garbage collector to clean up the heap as much as possible and in here I'm going to add a constructor and I'm going to say ID gets counter and then C gets, this is going to be kind of interesting but just bear with me I want to say the letter A plus counter but A is a char, and I cannot just add a char to an int. So what I'm going to do instead is, or not to an int, to a short. So I have to first cast this to a short, and then that will return, I believe, an int. Cannot implicitly convert type int to a char. Remember, we saw that in a previous video, how it automatically widens the left and, opera, left and right operands to an int when you have anything less than 32 bits and I have to recast all that to a char. I know that's kind of hokey syntax but what I'm trying to do here is every time I instantiate a counting class it will get a unique ID which is the value of counter and then it will get a letter and the letter will go A B C D E F and so if I say A well this is just an int if you remember chars with the ASCII tables and the ASCII values chars are really ints in disguise so I'm taking whatever the ASCII value for A is adding it to counter and then casting it back to a char and when I'm done I need to increment counter so that the next object will get a unique ID D and a unique letter so every time I instantiate a counting class each one has a unique ID and letter and they go sequentially it will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 It'll go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that. All right, let's uh, clean up our heap as we did here and turn your video quality up to high definition if necessary. Var C1, actually I'll just say var C gets new, counting class, control L, control V, 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 C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go create five of these objects out on the heap. And we should see the memory on the heap take on the values of A, B, C, D, E, F, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, I am going to vaporize these two middle ones, like so. So we store a reference to the first two, and we store the last one, but then these guys, we create them, and we abandon them as soon as we create them. It's, it's like, a, I don't know, maybe some wildlife can do that. Wildlife, they, they have babies, and they leave them. I'm sure there's probably something that... But we're going to come down here and say gc.collect, and we've seen what that does. We've seen that in prior videos. It's going to come and take these two objects and vaporize them. All right? And the garbage collector could also possibly move these objects around. Most likely it will move this object around, and these two will maintain their position. But these two will definitely uh, be up for garbage collection. So F10, uh, F10 get the garbage collector to do its job so that the heap is nice and clean before we do this F10 over this. Now I know that that uh, the EAX register will have the value or the address of this object in memory and, and so let me control DR whoops control DR control DR grab this address control C 0x control V enter and it looks like we have our A here, here's A, and here's our ID, which is zero, as you would hopefully expect. I want to highlight that object in blue. There's our first one. Let's create another one. Here's C2, F10. Here is C2. 
Right, I'll highlight that one right there. And then we create our two uh, instances that we are going to abandon. So that will be, that will be C and D. And I'll highlight them in red, noting that, yeah, we're going to, well, we, we're not going to ditch them. We, we've already ditched them. Okay, they're up for garbage collection when we get to this point in the code, but we're not quite there yet. So let's make, let's create C5. Here's C5 right there. I'll highlight C5 in blue, like so. And notice we have, here's the IDs, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now over here we have the letters A, here's an A, B, here's a B, C, C, D, D, E, E. So there we go. And now we're going to say GC collect. Now it looks like we've built a stack here. It looks like the stack is growing downwards, but it is not a stack. Right? If this was a stack, then the only value I could take off is the last one I put in. A stack is a LIFO structure. Last in is the first out. Last guy in is the first guy out. So that would mean I'd have to take this one out. But it's not. It's not. In fact, watch when I say collect. The garbage collector is going to come in here, vaporize this memory, probably move this one around somewhere. Uh, and I'm going to assume I think these guys will stay where they're at. Let's hit F10 and find out. Pay attention. F10. Look at that. Our E actually maintained position. A and B are there, but then this memory in here was taken up by something else. The garbage collector put something else in here. In fact, it looks like they're small objects. But anyway, they're not the same type. Notice the type object pointers are different from the type object pointers of our counting class. You can see this number here, 103D51, 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 but this is not 103D51, 103D51. These are different. Right, so there you go. That's the, that's the heap, right? The heap you can add, remove. It's it's a lot like a piece of property. Do whatever you want. Move things around all you want. That's fine. It's bits and bytes. But now I want to turn our attention to the stack and com and do this exact same example, but instead got to tweak it a little bit and use the stack to store our objects. And we'll see that we have a LIFO structure, meaning. We just can't randomly put objects where that they're, they're there until we unwind the stack and and uh, take them off uh, via returning from our methods, so to say.